Welcome back to DG Auto Works and look what finally arrived. Scale Trains HO Scale, CSX Pride and Service, ES44 ACs, and let me tell you, they were worth the wait. Let's take a closer look. Scale Trains has released in HO scale rivet counter versions of the CSX Pride and Service ES44 ACs commemorating our armed forces, first responders, and law enforcement. Now I have uh, friends or family in all three of these so this is a pretty cool deal. Also a portion of the proceeds from the sale of these locomotives benefits the following nonprofit organizations, Blue Star Families, First Responders Children's Foundation, Operation Gratitude, Operation Homefront, and Wounded Warrior Project, and they are officially licensed by CSX. These are the most detailed ES44 ACs currently available in plastic, and we're going to take a closer look at these. Some features of these locomotives are the same across the board, such as the full cab interior, but there are plenty of model and prototype specific features uh, that I will try to cover during this review. One such thing uh, is the placement of the doors. You also notice we have a law enforcement decal up here and two star decals down here on the anti-climber. Those are some uh, prototype specific features. Now you also notice the red and blue ditch lights on the law enforcement locomotive. Uh, now that is just like the prototype except they had to switch to clear per regulations when used in rail service. I'm going to freehand the camera a little bit so I can get in close and show you some of the details on the front of these locomotives. It's rather impressive. Check out the uh, simulated chain on the MU cable. You have the receptacle covers. Really nicely done. And uh, the proprietary coupler of scale trains. Some people swap them out for KDs. That's up to you. all the separately applied grab irons and such and that's pretty standard across the board as we look at the side of the 3194 law enforcement locomotive you will notice the thin blue line flag in the window just like the prototype spirit of law enforcement on the side man that's sweet looking you got the American flag right here here is a closer look of the window banners on the other two locomotives. Really nice. As we move down and take a look at the radial trucks you'll notice some really nice detail again. Uh, and You do have your standard uh, brake piping. Now with the radial trucks I will say there are sanding lines under here and I will try to get a closer look at those for you. Uh, but these trucks do catch on the sanding lines when you go through curves uh, and you'll hear it click you know just the clicking of them catching on each other um, so I don't know maybe you can bend the sanding lines out a little bit just away from the the end of the truck and that's on both ends of the locomotive uh, at the very front and at the very rear and once you run these you'll you'll see what I'm talking about but it's definitely not anything to be overly concerned about that I that I feel. And these also have rotating bearing caps as you can see and scale trains does include um, some replacement ones in the pack
As we move back a little bit, you'll notice these grills right here. I do not think these are see-through, but they are so well done that I can't tell if they are or if they are not. Uh, they just look amazing. And there are grab irons, of course. And you'll notice some of the uh, foundation uh, decals on the side, Operation Gratitude and First Responders Children's Foundation. Notice that there. Alright, I want to jump a little further back. I want to cover some of the details that are on all three of these locomotives and then we can discuss paint schemes a little later or more or less just show you all three paint schemes a little bit closer up. But to keep the, the video moving and, and not so long, uh, I want to kind of keep it going here. One thing that impressed me, all of these grills, one up here, all these down here, these two, they are all see-through grills. Man, that's pretty impressive. Moving down to the radial trucks again, like I said, really awesome detail on these. And the sanding line back in here is the ones that catch on the end of the trucks uh, when they do go through a curve. Um, but, like I said, that's it's not a deal breaker by any means. They're not going to cause any issues. Uh, if the little clicking bothers you, uh, you can maybe heat the sanding lines up a little wee bit with a soldering iron tip or something. They just barely have to be bent out. It's, it's not that bad of a deal, actually. And you will notice the uh, brake chain. This is a plastic two-piece brake chain. There is a brake in here. I think the one thing that would push these completely over the top would have been a real chain. I've mentioned that before in uh, Scale Trains videos, but I understand why they did it. Uh, just for ease of shell removal, uh, it does make it a lot easier without having a, a real chain to try to un unhook from everything. So, I get it. Again, the rear pilot of these things are just extremely detailed. I mean, you have the simulated chain again on the MU cable, the painted receptacles, the receptacle doors lifted up, you got your spare knuckles. I mean, these, <laughs> it's it's amazing level of detail actually. Really nicely done. Pop around to the other side again, all the see-through grills. That's just really impressive to me actually. That's one thing that really stands out to me. And again, more truck detail, more chain looks great. The fuel tank detail, the air tank detail I mean the camera actually doesn't seem to pick up every piece of detail that are on these things. It's quite impressive. We have uh, we have see-through grills right here and also I'm not sure how well it's showing up on the camera but there is white safety striping across the uh, sill the radiator grills are also pretty impressive. Okay, quick glimpse across the top of these quick. These all come with the RS5T horn in different bell configurations, just like the prototypes. Now there is some chatter on uh, the interwebs about number 1776 back here, the Armed Forces locomotive, uh, that it had a different horn at one time and back and forth. I am not up to speed with that. Uh, there is also some chatter that even the RS5T that's on it has a different sound to it than the one that's in the sound file on these locomotives. Um, but like I said, I'm not up to speed with that. Some of you know more about that than I do, but it is something to take note of and maybe investigate. The PTC antenna rays are nice. No complaints. No complaints at all. One thing to point out on 1776, the Armed Forces locomotive, they do have 
all five organizations on the side of this locomotive that receive proceeds from the sale of these. So that's pretty cool. One other thing I would like to point out is the banner that's on the rear of all three of these locomotives. I think they nailed it. Also, the top of 3194 has this also. I'll do a slow run by here so you can see the paint schemes of all three of these. Slight motor hum, not real bad. My camera has a pretty sensitive mic though, so it picks up a lot of things. These are really smooth runners. We will uh, cover operations, lights, and sound here in a little bit. Alright, I'm going to cover lights and sound at the same time simply because this does have some lighting that only operates while the locomotive is on. These locomotives all come with LED lighting which include headlights, ditch lights, lit number boards, walkway lighting, and ground lighting. If you buy the sound equipped models they come with ESU Loc Sound version 5 along with dual sugar cube speakers. The lighting and sound is the same in all three of these models except of course the law enforcement locomotive which has red and blue ditch lights I will do my best to show the red and blue ditch lights um, but my cameras do have a tendency to overexpose and they do not appear very blue or red but I will do my best to show that a little bit later so let's get on with it and fire this up function 8 Now this decoder does have a start up and shut down sequence, it's on function 8. Also I did lower the master volume for this video so hopefully it is not blaring loud on camera. I will move the camera and lower some lighting in here so you can see some of the lighting effects. I don't know if you noticed the walkway lighting, the number boards, and the ground lighting all came on when the locomotive started. I will turn on the headlight and ditch lights. They are really nice. They look to be about even lighting and they do alternate with the horn, so we'll do that. The bell does sound automatically with the horn. You can turn that off if that is something you don't want. And you do have your e-bell. Okay, I dimmed some lighting in my room. So hopefully you can see this. Zoom in a little bit. We have ground lighting right here it is only on the conductor side it is not on the other side uh, you can see walkway lighting back here and the lit number boards now the lit number boards there may be a little bit of bleed through with the black um, I'll see if I can uh, show that but man check this out really nice there you can see some of the bleed through I was talking about with the lit number boards. It's like there's not enough um, tint, black tint to them. And if we move around this side, you will see some more walkway lighting. Now the walkway lighting again comes on with the locomotive. And we come down here with the ground lighting. And 
we'll pop around to the back here, show you the uh, walkway lighting there along with the rear light. There is a really cool shot of the uh, red and blue ditch lights on the law enforcement locomotive. Man, that's so cool. I wish the real one could uh, run on the rails with that. Oh. And again, they flash. This is by far my favorite one out of the three. And I think it's just because of the red and blue ditch lights. And again, all three of these have somewhat of a light bleed through the number boards. All right, let's get into some operating of this. Um, now, I will say all three of my locomotives would not move at speed step one out of the box. Uh, even after uh, running one for a while, I thought maybe it'd be a break-in thing, but it was still the same. Uh, so to remedy that, I bumped up the start voltage. That would be CV2. Uh, it was set at one. I had to bump it up to three to get it to move in speed step one. Um, and uh, there is still a little bit of uh, jerkiness at speed step one, slightly. Um, maybe after some break-in time that will all clear up. I also tried the auto-tune feature of the uh, Look Sound 5, which actually just, it did the same thing I did. It set CV2 at a value of 3. So, uh, there you have it. So I'm going to bump this up to speed step one. So you do see some uh, hesitation. Bump it up to two. Three. And there's four. And five. And so on. Want to know one other cool feature? This comes with the ESU power pack installed. Gotta love it.
Scale Trains Jeevos and Rivet Counter. I like them. I'm impressed. I was not expecting this level of detail out of these. Uh, simply amazing. They look amazing. Paint's great. Lighting is great, except for that uh, little bit of light bleed at the number boards. Uh, ESU Loke Sound sounds great. Sounds good out of the uh, dual sugar cubes. Uh, it comes with the ESU Power Pack, which is their version of Keep Alive. That's a huge bonus right there. Uh, I can't think of any other manufacturer that actually uh, produces locomotives with the Keep Alive type feature in them, other than Scale Trains. So uh, that's a bonus in itself right there. Uh, they pull great. Uh, you saw that. Uh, they come in right around 23 and a half ounces. Uh, all three of these weighed slightly different, 23.4 to like 23.7. So I'd say right around 23 and a half ounces. Uh, that train was uh, 48 cars of various different kinds. Uh, now I did get a little bit of wheel slip here and there with the, that amount on my layout, but I have some uh, large sweeping curves, S curves and and turn backs, and it. it that kind of slows it down a little bit. Uh, if your layout's more of just a lot of straight running, I'm sure you could pull more than that. Uh, but, I mean, I tell you what, I can't get over it. They they really are amazing. There also was that uh, minor little issue about uh, not moving in speed step one, had to, to increase the start voltage a little bit. Uh, that's no big deal. I mean, that's something you can change CV2, just bump CV2 up a little bit. Uh, that may come around after some break-in time who knows, but uh, at speed step one now, even with me bumping the start voltage up, it still moves at 0.8 miles per hour through my uh, AccuTrack speedometer, so it's still slow moving, uh, so man, it, it works. You, sometimes you have to do just a little bit of tweaking, no big deal. Uh, I, I tell you what, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed with these. Uh, I'm not. so. Uh, I look forward to um, seeing maybe some uh, Norfolk Southern versions out of these. Maybe I'll check them out too. Uh, Alright guys, that's all I have for this video uh, and I'll see you next time.